Hello, welcome back. I don't know why you're here. I don't know why I'm here beyond that. A long time ago, two people had a very irresponsible night. So, back with a couple of soul, soul builds thing for uh, Hoka Manandaki. Why is that cat? Every time I talk, she starts meowing for attention, I swear. And Shira and Kuro, and give me one second. Anyway, like I was saying, Hoka, Manandake, and Shira and Kuro. Now, before we get too far into this, the Manandakes, one is fresh and one isn't fully built. And that's only because I had a very sudden idea for a second build I wanted to try with Manandake, but I didn't want to get rid of the first one. And I had the talisman. I saved up at the time. I'm a dumbass. But nonetheless, my stupidity, your benefit. So let's start with Hoka. Mm. That cat. Now, my first Hoka, this is my first Hoka here, and I think everyone could agree that one of the issues Hoka has is that she's supposed to have a day's ability. Like, it's a base chance and everything. As well as a base chance of stealing crit for two turns. But, in that same breath, she almost never seems to hit her effects. Like, ever. I think we all can safely say that that seems to happen. And I, that's been an issue for a while, I think, from what I've heard several people say. So, in my attempt, I tried. Attempts have been made. This particular one, since she's not going to hit her effects, was built more towards attack power and a wing and a prayer. With uh, Finikusu, I can't pronounce this, which was to boost her crit her attack, and try to add a little effect hit, but also with Harpy, and the main reason for why Finikusu is here is because Phoenix, fiery chicken, I have a dumb sense of humor. The same reason why Harpy is here. No offense, I love Hoka. <laughs> She's like one of my favorites. I just wish her effects would actually hit. But as you can see, not too shabby. The second one, I tried to go for a little more of a effect hit, but it didn't exactly come out correct. So far, it's like boosting her effect hit seems to make it hit even less, if that makes sense. It gets interesting. But this one is still a work in progress with the Shoujo build. It's a little more uh, trying to get more of an effect hit, but it's not working out. And of course, Yamabiku is here because I wanted her to have a first hit, as well as uh, try to get some effect resistance, because interesting enough, Hoka may not hit her effects the mo a lot, but she's very susceptible to getting affected, hit by effects. About as bad, almost as bad in my experience as Onikiri is weak to confuse. I'm not sure if you've had any issues with that or issues with Hoka in general hitting her effects and everything. Let me know down below. We can have a little discussion about it. In my opinion, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But I'd use her more often, but I'm still working on this. I think I'll unlock the secret one day. But for right now, trying to boost her effect hit and trying to keep. And if that fails, going with attack is your best bet with her. Manandake. Mm -hmm. This one is almost fully built. I literally have one more to go before I then realize I have an idea. So, you know how it goes. Let it not be said, let it never go unsaid that I'm a dumbass. Now, this one, he was built up for one specific purpose. Not so much his uh, call of arms, but so that he could. I kind of like 
him having his, his leaf barrier, it needs a higher attack. But I also liked him being able to be a counter-attacker. And that's actually one of the most common builds I've seen people suggest for him, is to put Scarlet on him. And let's face it, Scarlet is a very versatile soul. So, in my book, I went with that, but also because, as before, with some others, he's weaker to confuse, I tried to boost his effect resistance. This is the same reason I put effect, put Sinico on my Orochi. Effects are a butt. Now, this one, of course, attack and crit, crit damage oriented, but more focus on the attack and the crit damage a little bit. Now, Sinico, again... This is to try and get him a first move again, because first move, I, in my experience, a lot of matches can be cited in the first move. Albeit, I build a lot of mine to also be able to go the distance. Now, of course, here. In all honesty, this is actually a very effective build for him. I mean, you can switch out Seneco for anything, really, probably. But in my book, this is the one I actually prefer using with him. Now, this was my experiment, which is another one people have said before. Have said at one point someone suggested it, but then like a lot of people were like, yeah, no, no, no. I wanted to try it out, and so far I've been kind of impressed. It's a, uh, as you can see here, a Soul Edge build with a speed booster. Again, speed is Monandaki's friend, I think the attack boost and everything. It seems like it's definitely a friend to him. It's to boost his speed and everything, but also adding in some claws for a little extra crit damage and some attack. Now, yes, he's stronger in a general sense than the other. Lasts longer, speeds a little bit higher. I mean, at the cost of effect resistance, but I mean, overall, this is actually a very good build too. I think this might be superior than the uh, Scarlet build, but I haven't actually tested them side by side, and in the end, seeing them both fully skilled up would be the ultimate test of it. But so far, if you've got if you're just starting out with him, I definitely go with Soul Edge build. And if you got him a little hot, and if you feel like you want to you want to just play, uh, go with Scarlet, but. Soul Edge is definitely the better one, I think, to start him out with. Now, we move on to a favorite duo of mine. Shiro, and of course, Kuro. You can't have one without the other. Now, my Sh Shiro here, again, fully leveled up. As much as possible. He's adorable, I'm sorry. Now, I... I've seen people actually argue about what to put on him. And I decided, at one point, I saw an idea someone had and thought, you know what, I like this one. Because I have not found a reason to actually use this, so. I attach the, uh, Samuson to it because of his effects. Gave him a heck of an attack booster and some crit and crit damage. But I also added Obora Gumaruma. Again, with a crit damage booster because... I was very curious how this could work. How would Abor- Because I'd seen people suggest, like, Abora works good on him. I had seen some- at least one person suggest Samuson for Shiro, and I thought, just combine the two and see what happens. I've been very impressed, and this is actually pretty good. Now, I haven't tried anything else with him, but that's because I haven't thought anything else would work very well. But I'm open to suggestions in a tip. Now, in Kuro's case, shadow all the way. His whole thing is basically attacks. He can do multiple attacks. I mean, crit, crit damage, and attack are his friends. Now, he's a little bit stronger than Shiro, sure. But... I actually was looking for a decent attack soul, and these Hyosubis were actually the best I had at the time. So I popped them on, and uh, I have not been disappointed with them. They've worked very nicely, even though they're just there for an attack booster. 
Well, this shadow is, of course, a speed booster. Could use some more attack, I'll admit, but I like to see how it goes. Now, again, more speed, some crit, more attack here, and definitely some more. Now, is this the best build? No, but Shadow has always is a very versatile soul, and in my opinion, it works very nicely on Kuro. Because we love our crazy boy, and we need him to be able to go a little crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, so... I mostly suggest a Shadow build, or at least go with a build that boosts crit and attack boost for Kuro if you're starting out with him. For Shiro, I've actually found this with Abura Garuma and uh, Samuson to be the best, but I think as long as you have something that can do that can do an attack booster or crit booster or something, whatever you want to add to it would probably, a crit damage booster would probably work good along with this. Just, uh, you know, my statement, if you're starting out with Monodake, I think Soul Ledge is really good to start with. And if you want to get spicy, go with uh, Scarlet. I actually am liking the ex experimental one a little better, but I'll see how that goes when I fully again skill him up. And Hoka, I love you, but you were my problem child. For attack oriented, I like keeping Finikosu on her because it does let her hit a little bit harder, a little bit faster. In Shoujo, as the, um, it's an experiment, and it does seem to help a little bit, but sh as you'll probably see, because I'm planning to do a combat test with her, I'm like 90% certain she's never going to hit her. She's probably only going to, through that whole thing, only hit her effects once, if that. But we'll see. But that's enough from me. You've heard me ramble. I'm going to knock off from here. If you would do the holy trifecta of YouTube down below, the like, comment, subscribe. What Shiki do you want to see what I've got for? Do you have a soul build suggestion you think would be cool to watch? Something you want me to test? Let me know. I'm willing to cooperate here. And I'll see you next time.